Okay, maybe we can get one more video done before the noise starts. Uh, the next reading that you have is the Leopold and Loeb case. Now, the reason I put this case in is because it's, it's extremely interesting for us for a lot of different reasons. I mean, I think you'll clearly see when you read the case that there are a lot of ethical implications here. But you know, primarily what I want to say about it is that the reason I put this in is because this is an example of two boys who had a very definite idea of what their moral guide was, what their values were. Um, you know, so far what we've been talking about is sort of ways that people start to build that moral guide for themselves, how we start to establish our values, the things that affect that, some of the ideas of how other people have done that. And so now we come to a case here where there's an example of two boys who have a very strong idea of what their guiding compass is. Now, I would not be too far out in left field to say that their idea of what is acceptable is completely contrary to the majority of what you know society finds acceptable but it's interesting with these two boys in that these two boys were Nietzsche followers Frederick Nietzsche at the time he was a very um, popular philosopher and in the 20s when this took place the way that a lot of people were interpreting what he said um, led to, I think, the impetus of what happened with these boys. Now, Nietzsche had what he calls the Superman theory. And his Superman theory, the way it was being interpreted at the time, now understand you can ter interpret it a lot of different ways and certainly in a lot more productive ways, but at the time in the 20s, the way that a lot of artistic people, a lot of wealthy people who with whom Nietzsche was very popular, the way they were interpreting Nietzsche's Superman theory was that if you were intellectually superior to others, then basically you could do whatever you wanted to. Because according to Nietzsche, if you're the smartest guy in the room and you make a decision to do something, then that must be a right or a just decision because you're too smart to make a bad decision. So basically during this time frame, a lot of people who felt they were intellectually superior were using his theory to justify them doing anything they wanted to do. And basically that's what these boys did. They decided that they were supermen, as Nietzsche described them, intellectually superior to everyone around them. And one of them had a fascination with crime. They both were interested in Nietzsche, one more than the other. But coupling this fascination of crime one had with the interest in Nietzsche that they shared, they decided that to prove their intellectual superiority, they were going to commit the perfect crime. And the ultimate perfect crime, you know, what's worse, what's, what's bigger than killing someone? And if they could kill someone and get away with it, they would prove they were intellectually superior. And if they're intellectually superior, the way that they were interpreting Nietzsche, it's okay to do it. You know, the person who got killed is kind of the casualty of war. Very skewed perspective on what's okay, but as I said, what I wanted to point out to you is that these two boys had a very definite idea of what their guiding moral compass was, and they followed it right to the end. And I want you to kind of think as you're reading this, of course, you know, discuss the case and what you think about what the boys, and you might want to look up a little additional information about the boys and their lawyer if you want to add a little more to what I have there. Um, but you might want to think about what if these two boys had had that really strong moral compass and they had decided to find a cure for cancer to prove their superiority. You know, they took a very destructive path. But the point is they had a very strong idea of what they were doing and how they justified it as being right. And that's another thing I want you to think about, how we as individuals use our own values, our own morals to justify what we do and make things right. Because these boys, to the very end of their lives, never thought that they actually did anything wrong in killing this boy. They thought that it was a necessary means to the ends of what they were trying to do. So a little something for you to think about as you read this case.